Blog Talk Radio. Well, well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I am Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you for giving me this hour on what I know is bound to be your very busy Saturday. I want to tell you why I appreciate that you are, in fact, listening to a show, a show that we hope to keep people informed and work towards making a better America, work towards making a more productive, a more inclusive society that is biased towards the middle class. First of all, how are you guys doing this afternoon? I hope you do re- remember that this is a call-in show, so please remember to give me a call at 646-929-2495. Again, that number is 626 626- Nine two nine two four nine five. I really want to hear from you today. Our discussion is going to be what I hope to be a a vivid discussion on wages, the middle class, and workers. So why don't you remember to give me a call at six four six nine two nine two four nine five. Again, you know, the Walmart in its utter benevolence has decided to give raises in wages. Your CEO in a rather cult-like video, and I have that linked in one of my blogs, announced all the great things Walmart will begin doing to enhance the growth of their employees. One wonders, why now? We all really know why, don't we? We all really, really know why. So that is what I want to talk to you guys about today. That's what we'll talk about. What are your thoughts? Let's talk. I will also be following our hashtag politics done right on Twitter. So if you want to send a message by Twitter as well, give me a call. Again, that is 646-929-2495. I want to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, starting with blog number one, titled, Popular Activism Works. Walmart is raising wages. I blogged that earlier this week, and uh, here it goes. Activism works. It works slower with a government that is corrosive influence of money and politics. However, it works effectively on companies whose baseline is dependent on the average American citizen's continued patronage. Companies like Gap and IKEA saw the light. Costco have always understood that a well-paid worker makes a returning satisfied customer and a reliably solid bottom line. By April of this year, Walmart will begin paying its hourly workers at least $9 per hour. That is $1.75 over the national wage or over the national minimum wage. By February of next year, they will begin paying a minimum of $10 Per hour. This is not a favor to employees. This is overdue compensation and just a start. This is something Walmart could have done years ago. A 2011 UC Berkeley study pointed out that if Walmart paid its workers a minimum wage of $12 and passed the entire increase on to customers, it would cost the customer 46 cents a trip, or about $12.49 per year. Ask yourself, folks, is that worth it? Is it not worth that to make a more vibrant? Think about this. Think about 500,000 more people making $12 an hour, and the buying power that they have, and anyone who studies Economic 101 knows that it's not the amount of money in the aggregate, it's how fast 
that money is circulating that determines economic activity and the potential for increasing value. Even if Walmart were to pass 100%, this is what the study said, even if Walmart were to pass 100% of the wage increase on to consumers, the average impact on a Walmart shopper would be quite small, 1.1% of prices, well below Walmart's estimated savings to consumers. This works out to $0.46 cents per shopping trip or $12.49 per year for the average consumer who spends approximately $1,187 per year at Walmart. The most extreme estimate, as portions of the raise could be absorbed through other mechanisms, including increased productivity or lower profit margins. But as we know, lower profit margins in America is a no-no. We cannot have lower profits. Those people that are drinking tea at the pool, looking at their stock, the, the ticker of their stocks move. If they lose 1% of their profits, oh my God, it's the end of the world. It means we must fire a whole lot of people. We don't care about people. It's not about people. The same study showed that little amount has a tremendous impact on the financial well-being of those receiving the increases. According to the study again, our data suggests that $12 per hour minimum wage standard at Walmart would be effective in aiding lower income families. If Walmart increased the minimum wage to 12 bucks an hour, 41.4% of the income gain would accrue to workers with wages below 200% of FPL. That's the poverty level. These low-wage workers could expect to earn an additional $1,670 to $6,500 a year in income. And folks, where do you think that income is going to be going? Right back into the economy. The marginal propensity to consume of the lower side of our, of our, of our wage equation goes directly into the economy. In other words, money is to the lower income folk. That money goes out into the economy right away. You give it to upper class income earners, they save it. Or they buy products that don't necessarily make an economy more vibrant. They may buy a boat, but how many people are going to buy a boat? Or make a yacht or whatever. So we need to keep perspective, perspective, perspective. Activists will continue, or, you know, activists will continue shaming and forcing legislation to ensure companies pay a living wage. Crystal Ball got it right with, the, with, the, with this one and inside of my blog, which is a blog of the week on the blog post. There's a video of Crystal Ball really letting Walmart have it with the specific data that shows the type of company we're looking at when so little of their gains have gone to their employees to the, to the extent that during a Christmas uh, last year or year before last, I don't remember which one, they actually set up a beggar's bin to help those customers or those, those workers at Walmart who needed help. Walmart's raise is just a small down payment for the living wage all Americans deserve. Now, that is the first blog that I want to get to. Now, tomorrow at 1.30 Central, the real blog about Walmart that I wanted to talk about, which includes the video, the cult-like video from the Walmart president and CEO, Doug McClellan, drops at dailycoast.com, 1.30 p.m. tomorrow. But you get the preview. Please, folks, remember this is a call-in show, 713, or I'm sorry, I was about to give you my phone number. This is a call-in show. The number is 646-929-2495. Again, that number is 646-929-2495. Give me a call. If you want to speak, please do remember to press 1. Here it is. The blog that will be dropping tomorrow at Daily Cost. Walmart recently headlined the business news. 
They're giving a raise to over 500,000 of their employees by raising their base pay from 7.25 to 10 bucks an hour. This is occurring even though even without government forcing a national minimum wage. Walmart president and CEO Doug McClellan released a video on Facebook addressing employees, but who was it really for? It was for the media. It was for the media to give them good coverage so that they can keep those crazy populist activists out of the way. You know, if they, if they kind of give you that feeling like, oh, we're giving you something, we're going to be able to tone you down. But let's continue with the blog. He was excited to be making it in making his video in Sam Walton's office for reasons that likely show Walmart's blindness to what they have grown to represent. He thinks it's an honor to be in, Wal- in, in, in Sam Walton's office. It's an honor to be there, the master, in the master's office, giving you that speech. Come on, guys. Anyhow, continuing the blog. Macmillan starts by, by stating that Walmart's people make, he said, the Walmart leaders wanted to demonstrate this year that they care and appreciate their associates, the little given to their employees for indoctrinating purposes. And I should repeat that line because I mangled. He said the Walmart leaders wanted to demonstrate this year that they care and appreciate their associates, the title given to their employees for indoctrination purposes. If they were associates, wouldn't they have more power to dictate their professional direction? They're not associates. They're indentured servants. Continuing with the blog. We want to create a situation where you get every single one of the benefits that those that came before us receive, said Macmillan. Really? That is likely the most tone-deaf statement of his entire address to the Walmart nation. Walmart employees do not need to get the benefits of their predecessors. They need to get wages and benefits afforded by more responsible corporations. How does Walmart intend to write by to do right by their employees? Well, associates, right? By April of this year, Walmart will begin paying its hourly workers at least Nine bucks an hour. That is one seventy five over the national minimum wage average. I repeated that. I said that before, but by February of next year it'll be ten bucks an hour. Walmart also said it will give employees more predictability in scheduling and presumably more hours. Walmart will provide better onboarding to promotions. If they were associates, shouldn't that have already have been the standard modus operandi? But no, they released this as some kind of a, oh, a great new initiative. A beautiful, great initiative by the good old Walmart. Walmart's new PR, or let me, let me back up a second, because I, I missed an important paragraph. Business Wire called this path to mediocrity a bold new initiative on pay and training for U.S. associates. Wow. Wow. Business Week thinks that bringing the Walmart employees barely up to mediocrity is a bold new initiative on pay and training for U.S. associates. This Walmart action is nothing but a public relations stunt. A new, a few months ago, MSNBC Crystal Ball put Walmart's treatment of employees into perfect perspective. And again, I have the link in the post for that. Walmart's new PR stunt is not a favor to its employees. This minimal act is likely existential for the company as its merger or its meager wages progressively make working their attainable. Again, repeating, this minimal act is likely existential for the company as its meager wages progressively make working, and if working there is untenable, the company fails. So in effect, what they're doing is the very, very 
minimum to make it possible for them to scrounge for a few employees to keep the profit stream from indentured servitude flowing to the top. The next part of this blog has some information, some of the information I already gave you in the previous blog, so I think I'm going to skip those two pieces, but I'll end it with these last two paragraphs. Walmart's meager attempt of a pay increase is yet to provide those employees with a living wage for a dad and one child or a mom and one child, let alone the minimum wage hating conservatives perfect nuclear family. Companies like Gap and IKEA saw the light. Costco have always understood that a well paid worker makes a return and satisfied customer and a reliably solid bottom line. Walmart believes that slightly higher base wages is sufficient to tamper the activists and forced that forced them to move on the issue of their lousy pay scale. Walmart continue to believe their continual PR. Employees called associates. Cultish adoration of its founder and statements of care for its employees are the deeds that will allow them to continue their policies that make their employees analogous to indentured servants, will ensure that PR moves are not allowed to change the true narrative that income inequality is causal by predatory employers like Walmart. Again, Activists will ensure. And who are the activists? Who are the activists? Everyone that's listening, when you get a chance, look in the mirror. That's the activists. You guys are the activists that we are dependent on to rebuild the middle class, to make a better America to ensure that things move forward. There ain't no new Messiah coming to solve this problem. There ain't no new Messiah. There isn't some great featured person that's with charisma. Obama could not do it by himself. No person, no individual, no woman, no man is going to do this for the middle class, and the poor. The poor and the middle class have to get off their rear ends and demand what is theirs. They are not, if they sit bration out of its own benevolency, will decide that we are, we are going to treat these people nicely. You are dreaming. We are in a different world. Or, well, I shouldn't really say that. The world has always been this way. The world has always been consisted of a few who attempted to take advantage of the masses, and it's not until the masses decide they will take it no more that action occurs, that people get off of their rear end and demand what is theirs. I wrote a piece last week where I, I made a mention to the fact that the people who are of most importance in this country are not the wealthy. The wealthy, they like to talk about the 48%, 47% or whatever that number is that are the, the, the class of dependency. The reality is the class of dependency is that 1%, that 0.1%. They move capital around and everybody else serves them. So who is the dependent person? Those that serve or those to be served? Those to be served are the ones that are dependent. But they have taught us to, to in, they, they have infected the minds of the masses to believe that somehow those at the top know something you don't. That engineer that builds the bridge, the capitalist who funded the bridge couldn't do it. That doctor who sliced that, that, that person's chest open and added that catheter and saved that life 
that capitalist who funded the building of that knife or whatever couldn't do it. It is a society. So then why is it that that capitalist that sits down and moves around his money or that store that simply offers to resell things produced by millions of others are the ones who profit the most from the spoils of society. We need a paradigm shift in thinking. We have to reestablish our worth. Or in sometimes not reestablish our worth, we must establish our worth. Who are we? What are we worth to this society at large? That is how we should be thinking. We should not be adoring the, the Berkshire Hathaways, the Bill Gates, and all these guys. Bill Gates is a great guy. But Bill Gates is not an exceptional software engineer. He's a mediocre software engineer who knew how to use the capitalist system and build a fortune. Luckily, in his case, he's given most back. The same with uh, our other big multi-billionaire, uh, 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 the guy who owns Berkshire Hathaway, uh, giving his money back. But too many of these capitalists believe that they really deserve or are or, or entitled to their wealth. I am here to tell you folks, the only reason they can feel that way is we in the masses have allowed them to corrupt our thinking we have allowed them to, to make believe. And, you know, that, that is one of their biggest fear. For us to realize that we together are what make a society and not those, not those with, with, with capital, not those that fund things, not the bankers. What can they do? What can they create? Go to your store. Go to Walmart. Look at every single product created at Walmart. Then go to the CEO of Walmart and ask him one question. Do you have the wherewithal? Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the education? Do you have the training to design, to create, to mine any of these products on the shelf that's making you rich and that have made you a slave master to those who work for you and those who create for you. Think about it. It's not about them. It is about us. It is about how do we really feel about ourselves. And it's not about only how we feel about ourselves. It is also what do we know that we are capable of. And what do we know that those at the top are incapable of doing? Remember, those at the top have become lazy because they are only being served by the masses. If you doubt it, find your richest friend or your richest acquaintance or your richest somebody and try to prone within themselves. What are they capable of doing to sustain life for themselves, absent those who serve them? Think about it. It's all about worth. What do you really believe you're worth? One of the things that I am adamant on talking, preaching, stating, there are many times people will say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm not capable of doing that. Or, or they start to give kudos to others. Or they start to give, you know. Um, we, we have to learn how to really give kudos where, where they're due, right? Not to just talkers, to doers. You know, that guy that created that new product and then somehow it gets stolen or a copyright. You know, I, I've always told the story. I told this one in a book that I wrote a few uh, years ago called As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right Wing Doom. One of the things I said in there is <clears throat> I showed us how how rigged the system is. You know, we have uh, Elizabeth Warren talking about a rigged system all the time, and she mostly talks about it from a Wall Street perspective. But it's more much deeper than that. It's our patent system. I remember back then, 
And I'm coming to you, Jack. I see that you have your hands up. I remember um, earlier on in my software business, I had this great idea. It was to create a website uh, for shopping cart that you one click to your product. And I remember uh, having to say, having folks say, oh, well, you got to do the patent search and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, who's going to patent holding a mouse and clicking on something to buy something? I mean, anybody, I mean, that is obvious. You don't patent stuff like that. Lo and behold, somebody that we all know has the patent on that. And my great idea, because it seemed similar to clicking a mouse button, meant uh, that product was not going to be realized. I talk about that in my book a few years. Also, you think about that former who has to, he, he's always formed all his life and he plants his seed and he saves some of his seed for the next cycle. A company like Monsanto decides that they are going to create a seed and they ex uh, and they they make some changes to the DNA in the seed and the farmer continues to make his plants and plant his seeds and pollen knows no pollen doesn't know one field from the other pollination can pollinate any plant for miles. So his field gets pollinated by pollen from a field who uses Monsanto's product. The next cycle, his seed has characteristics of the Monsanto product. Monsanto sues this farmer because this farmer continues to use his own seeds, but it so happened it got pollinated by some of the pollen from a field using the manufactured seed. Think about that. Think about who controls us. Think about who controls our food supply. Think, some, think about wages and why we are all seeming to be left behind by just a few as folks try to monopolize more and more and more of resources that should belong to us all. Walmart, that meager price, little price, that little wage increase means nothing. It still doesn't bring your employees up to the living to a living wage. We are still waiting, and we will still be out there seeking. We will still be out there seeking. Three six. Who do I have the honor of speaking with? Are you meaning me, the Bruce? Bruce hey, Bruce, Bruce, how are you doing, my friend? Talk to me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I was just going to comment on your uh, statements about uh, people having the ability to move up and let you know that the wealthier people are getting better educations. The are getting better uh, merit for what they're doing than other people who are going to public schools. And so that's one of the other inequalities that we have in this uh, country here. And that was uh, one of the points that you had mentioned that right. people... Can I, can, I, can I just add to that point one, one thing? It is interesting that, that what you said is absolutely true, right? Now that the wealthier people can buy a better education, they can buy all those particular items. But you know what is so interesting about that, Bruce? Look at the education that, they've, they are, that they're buying. You would think that they, you know, remember what I, one of the tenets of the discussion is, you know, uh, about our worth is that they can, they can walk into a Walmart store. The owner of Walmart can walk into the, the, uh, the store and knows nothing about the products in there, how they're made, how they're designed, or anything like that. Not because they don't have the capability to know that, but they have, the, the, the game is rigged in such a manner that these guys, when they go to school, they don't even need to learn the difficult stuff. 
what they're going to do is go to school and learn how to learn how to move capital more efficiently. So they'll be geniuses in moving capital e- efficiently, but still they will be from a class of folk can't do anything for themselves. Just a thought. You want to comment on that? Ruth? Oh, yes, I'm I'm sorry I got interrupted with another call. Uh but I do want to mention that these people who are, have the education, they then become the CEOs of corporations, and then they decide what their own salary is going to be. And <laughs> other people who are in the chain of command, they don't get to decide that. So <clears throat> exactly. that's why it, it is very important that in the inequality of uh, income here, that it's being changed so that the wages are going to the top uh, top people who are deciding their own wages. Now, the wages in this country have been stagnant at about $8 trillion for many years, but most of the wages are going to the top end, which means the middle class and below are going further in debt and down. It, 75% are living paycheck to paycheck, and it only takes one illness, one accident, or whatever to slip out of the middle class and to go into poverty and bankruptcy. That's the problem in the country. I agree wholeheartedly. Think about that, and, and think about how destabilizing that, that is. And think about, you know what would be sort of interesting? Uh, if... You know, right now the Supreme Court is going to be talking about uh, whether Obamacare can provide subsidies to those um, to those states that didn't join the exchange, and it will be interesting to see how they rule. Because what you said is so important. Immediately after that ruling, if Congress doesn't fix the bill the way you know the, the Supreme Court would want it fixed, of course, immediately thereafter. 70-something percent of people who are on subsidies for Obamacare are at risk of losing their health insurance not a, by, because they probably are unlikely to afford, be able to afford that insurance. So, I mean, um, uh, everything that that thing was fought for to allow you to have affordable health care, to prevent health care from uh, your health care from bankrupting you, that would be one more dagger into the hearts of the middle class. Yes. <clears throat> and the Republicans that are up there, they keep wanting to take away from the middle class and the uh, poor people here. And not if you take uh, health care, for example, then they're going to lose people who have pre-existing conditions. Uh, people under uh, 26, they're going to lose that insurance. That's for people, not the corporations. Uh, exactly. Anytime. Exactly. Yeah, you can see who, which party favors what. And by taking all of the um, subsidies and the help that government does provide away from those people, they are thinking that they're going to uh, reduce their taxes and things. Well, they're not paying taxes now. And they want uh, pays for Social Security and Medicare, Medicaid, all of those is our uh, payroll taxes that comes out. Well, the wealthy don't pay that. It's, I believe it's the cap is 117,000 now. So billionaires and uh, those aren't paying that. Mitt Romney paid less than one half of one percent in payroll taxes of his adjusted gross income. You know, that's after all of his millions, he gets down to uh, paying a much less amount. So we're not taxing. The high-end wealth that comes from capital gains and profits and those things, we're taxing the actual people who are making a wage. So if you take those away, the middle class would do much better. We've got to have the minimum wage. Yeah, I sit down, uh, Bruce, and I wonder, 
how do these people sleep at night when uh, their policy when their policies can be shown to materially hurt millions in this country, and not only hurt millions in this country, but also um, how do they millions of the people who vote for them? I mean, think about let's let's just look going. I you know I'm a stickler for Obamacare. Let's just go back to Obamacare. Think about the amount of their own constituents who realize millions of them, not thousands, millions of their constituents, because it's mostly red state uh, uh, recipients that get all these subsidies. Most of the people they'll hurt are the people within their own state. It's simply exactly. hard. It's hard to understand how the the the, the, psych, the psychopathy of that uh, the psycho the, I mean these guys are, are they're psychopaths I mean you can't uh, you you you're either dumb or you're a psychopath and none of these guys are dumb they're smart but they don't they're not they have no prop- Yo. <laughs> well they uh, voted fifty six times to do away with the Affordable Care Act. They started off saying they had an alternate to it. We never did see what that was. And then they just dropped that all together. Lately, I just saw an article from Kevin Brady that we should go to the Republican alternative to health care. But he failed to mention what that alternative is or where we could find out about it. There is no alternative. So, Look. I tell you what, I, I'm. What, do you have a feeling as to what the Supreme Court's going to do? Well, to support that, I, I think it's very popular. Uh, even though the Republicans say that the Affordable uh, Care Pack, uh, people don't want it, and it's not uh, true. I. Don't think that is true. I think the populist movement, as people see that they can get affordable care and they can get uh, wellness exams and uh, pre-existing going on, that they will want it like uh, Social Security. They're not going to get that away. The problem was we couldn't get Medicare for all through Congress, and that would have solved all of these questions and uh, parts that they're Oh, objecting to Medicare for all, all of those things would go away. So I think the Supreme Court knows where the country's going, what the people want. And if they don't uh, come through with supporting it, we're going to have a crisis in this country of the judiciary system, the, um, the judges are going to be irrelevant People are going to take law in their own hands. So I, I think I agree that they ought to I, support it. I have, I have those same thoughts. I have a feeling that um, because of the disruption it would create, these guys may want to repeal or may want to pass, you know. But I think what they're going to do is they're, not, they're going to say that the intent of the law was as it's implemented. Because if they don't do that, will be endangered. I'm going to leave you hot, Bruce. Let me bring um, Jack into the Jack, how are you doing, my friend? Okay, fine. I just happen to disagree with you about uh, what I think, I think uh, what Walmart has done is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Raising you the rents are going to go to $10 an hour uh, next year. Uh uh, living wage, okay, when I uh, left the post office, uh, retired from the post office, I was making like uh, $16.5 an hour, then plus night differential, and so, sure, uh, Congress uh, ain't, ain't doing anything uh, about uh, they want to obstruct. And I just can't understand uh uh, why people will vote uh, so for reactionary people uh, 
the Tea Party guys, uh, they are uh, like ISIS, only uh, they don't uh, do violence yet. I mean, I, ISIS is a uh, reactionary, it's fundamentalism and uh, extremism with, uh, and that's really the problem the uh, people got to lick. And it is a fundamentalism and extremism. That's exactly what uh, ISIS does, and that's what some uh, uh, rea- reactionary uh, and people get suck- sucked in with the violence. I think that uh, probably uh, much more important things than, uh, I hate to say that, than uh, worrying about the minimum wage. Uh, I think you have Jack, you got to do is change you know, human Jack. nature. Jack, can I interrupt you a second? Let me let me yeah. say one thing. Um, I don't want to say, I'm not trying to say that it's not a good thing that Walmart has increased its wage. Its, I, I agree with you. It's a good thing anytime middle class or poor Americans can make a few more dollars. My contention is is that it's nowhere close to enough. Ten dollar, uh, you know, uh, I I I linked a study from uh, Harvard in the blog post that shows that a minimum wage, a minimum wage, not uh, rather a living wage, requires that that employee make at least twelve dollars an hour, one for one, for one for. and Twelve. You know, we are nowhere close to having a, a the type of wages that people can sustain a good life. In other words, if you're making that $10 an hour, you're scraping by, and you don't leave yourself any... You're, you make $10 an hour, than, you're fighting better, to make... Better than time. 7 or 8. It is better. You're correct. It is better. But yeah. you are still... You know, one, one of the things about that you have... You know, that if you notice, Walmart brought into the equation. Walmart said when they uh, released the video, they said... We are going to increase these wages, but they also attached another thing. And the other thing they attached to it was saying they were going to help them in, uh, with their professional advancement. You know why they said that? Think about it. Because a regular worker getting $10 an hour and fighting to find some overtime to make more money to actually pay his, act, his or her actual bills, they don't have time for personal improvement. Okay, they don't have time yeah, for well. personal improvement. So therefore, what happens with an employee who is stuck in a dead end job? The first chance they get, the very first chance they get, they are out of there, and their turnover is high. You know why Costco does so well, even though Costco's average employee makes twenty something dollars per hour. Average Walmart employee. Eleven dollars an hour. Think about it. The average Walmart employee makes below the poverty line, below the living wage line. The average Costco employee weighs way above that line. So um, when they talk about professional development for their employees, that is another. And you know, I, I call it the indentured servitude because if you if your if your employee knows that they can't move up their they're going to leave. If they have a feeling that somehow this company is going to give them a pass, well, they may stick around a, a bit longer. But then you read between the tea leaves. Walmart is going to give $100 million to an endowment to help its 500,000 or more employees to move up the ladder. Come on. That's a drop in the bucket as far as, uh, first of all, you've been paying these people for so little for so long, in effect, you are transferring the excess labor of your millions of employees to a few shareholders. That is indentured servitude. And the problem about it is nobody wants to say it. The people on the news are not saying that this is a new slavery. Oh, that doesn't sound politically correct. But what we have are corporations uh, uh, profiting on the excess labor of its employees, and, and transferring that wealth to a very select few. 
We have to change our form of thinking. Uh, on my KPFT show on Monday, uh, on Monday it was great to hear uh, one of the callers say, we have to get out of the modal. We have to get out of the mental thought process that says somehow employers are doing us this great favor by hiring us. Employers are not doing us a great favor by hiring us. Without us, there's no employer. You get it, Jack? Yeah, well, now as far now as far as Obamacare, I don't I don't want to call it Obamacare, but this, it's called the ACA. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, uh, politicians are just plain scared, but uh, consider public option, and I think that uh, uh, at least half of the people. Uh, will choose that uh, right because you get the employer and the insurance company out of the equation. Uh, and, uh, and in the end, you can get stuff like medical equipment or any, anything else will be uh, completely paid for. Uh, you have to pay zero, uh, just practically zero for uh, uh, copay. Uh that's I agree thing. with that. Uh, I mean, and uh, that sh- that should have been done well, well, maybe what five six years ago when, uh, yes. when they were cons- they were considering the uh, 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 wages. Uh, I have another another thing we can start with the tax reform. We get slow little steps. So I know I realize that. What Walmart is doing is a baby step, but it's a step. It's progress. Uh, now, let me say, uh, the first thing you can do with that income tax reform, a baby step, get rid of uh, the hell call, uh, carried interest, like what uh, right. Romney is so uh, fr- afraid of. Uh, tax, tax the thing uh, and go back to uh, uh, well, say a maximum of fifty percent for people making over a billion, uh, over a billion dollars. You tax that rate at fifty percent, and uh, tax the uh, uh, and you put the, the carried interest uh, starting at two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, I got ideas. Uh, and I still uh, having a novel uh, and, and uh, publish that. Uh, that uh, are you so typing I up your novel, uh, Jack? Hey, Jack, are you typing up that novel yet? Uh, I'm having uh, Melissa. She's she's gonna. Uh, well, it's my granddaughter. Type it and uh, type up the the. Uh, we got to take it with the uh, three pages of uh, preface, and it gives all all the ideas. Uh, uh, what's wrong with this? Uh, what, what, what's wrong with this society? Yeah, and, let me hold uh, one second. Bruce. Let me let me call out to, to a few people here, folks. Please do remember this is a call-in show. I. I have listeners, but I don't have anybody hidden one to give to call. So, give if you want to talk, press press one and say your piece. I'd love to hear some other ideas other than Bruce and Jack. Bruce and Jack are the brave souls that are talking today. Six four six nine two nine two four nine five. I don't know what Again. happened. To you. I don't know what happened to your friend in San Antonio, but I uh, I enjoy him. Uh, uh, was John, or I think his name is? Uh, yeah, that was yes, John. John. I haven't heard from John in a long time. Um, he also used to call into the KPFT show. Uh, so, you know, I, I think uh, he had some issues that he had to work through with, you know, personal problems, that sort of a thing. But it would be well, great I to have, have, per- I have personal problems, too. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I can't. I, I haven't been on a blog for a week. It's a problem of... Uh, Are you okay? Uh, yeah. No, it's not my health. It's a problem of getting... Oh, okay. uh, uh-huh. Of uh, a mouse, uh, I, got I, you. I think uh, her mouse ain't working. Or I've, uh, but I'm due for 
a, a sizable tax refund. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to add anything here before we go? I yes, I want to add something about Walmart. Walmart has um, the family that owns Walmart, the uh, heirs, Walmart. they are the rich family in the whole world, the Waltons. And yes. they have uh, directed what Walmart has been doing. So they have been keeping out unions. But now when their employees are stepping up, and it's come in the uh, newspapers, it's embarrassing the Walters. And, <clears throat> excuse me, they're, they're saying that they are looking that's like very good. crass uh, money people, so that's why they're coming across with, uh, let's make our employees uh, bring them up more in whole. They're, they're trying, but they don't know what to do. So I know, I and you know what? It's she is a baby boys actually talking about how they have to go on uh, public assistance and everything, working at Walmart, and they can't get enough um, hours to, if they are full-time, they aren't getting their 30 hours. Uh, they can't make it on that, and that is embarrassing the Wal Waltons. And now they're having their executives of Walmart to come out and counter that by raising some of the raise, the wages. But that shows you how much, how important unions are to get things done. And if you oh, can't yeah. have a union, people should rise up on their own and make it uh, more of a squawk so people will take a notice of them. Uh, you, have go, you, have, you have to go back to the night, to, to the uh, prior before 1900, you had to do uh, a Carnegie and those guys. Uh, they were they uh, they were against unions. Uh, uh, first uh, one uh, to uh, recognize any people's uh, power was Ford, uh, and he, and, uh, he and, uh, and, uh, and all those guys. Uh, you know, to, to, What's what's helping our wealth, and uh, I figure a lot of the <laughs> combination of uh, of uh, a ticket would be Sarah Palin with Donald Trump as the vice yeah, president. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, Jack, we're getting we're we're getting close to that time, so um, let me yeah, let right, me just uh, yeah no no uh, let me just say I still have to hear your your last fifteen seconds of comments, but. I just want to uh, tell people that um, I, I want to piggyback off of what Bruce has to, had to say, which is so true. Uh, it is there, there are these right to work for less states like Texas. And notice I won't yeah. call it right to work state. I'm calling it right to work for less states. They're not right to work states. Yeah. These states, yes, it is true that the unions are weak in these states, but the people are strong. So what I what my 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 begging my willing on to folks is that you know what it doesn't matter what the law has to say or how they try to keep you out in a free country you still have that right to go out there and demand and our brothers and sisters at Shell and and Landell Bissell and all these companies here in Houston and the Ship Channel they are they are striking and they are they are trying to stick up for what they deserve our our families and friends on the ports on the Pacific coast, they are also striking and they are going to they are going to get preferred benefits because they stood up. Now we have to be bold ourselves. We have to be uh we have to not fear a temporary loss in wages, a temporary difficulty, temporary strain, temporary whatever and go out there and demand from these people because that's what they expect. They think that we can't handle any pain, and because they are wealthy, yeah. they can handle quite a bit of pain. But let me tell you one thing. If they ever believe that we are waking up, because they may have their wealth, but there are more of us, and the one thing they want is the maintenance of civil society. And you only maintain civil society if people... Or, or believe they're in a and and in, in, in a in a equitable path. Otherwise, it doesn't maintain. And the same thing that happens throughout the world. 
can happen right here in the United States. And there are many communities right here in the United States. They're just on the brink. Okay, Bruce, give me, a, or rather, uh, let me start with Jack. Jack, give me a quick closing statement, real quick, please, sir. Okay, uh, we got you. Got to fight fundamentalism and uh, uh, extremism. Uh, as a cause of uh, is, is the enemy of democracy. That's what I'm. That's my slogan for today. Fundamental Thank you very much, Jack. That, that is probably... of democracy. Bye. All right, Jack. That has been your shortest closing statement. I want to thank you for it because it was quick and concise, sir. Okay, Bruce, give me your closing statement, sir. Well, I want to say that money talks, but it doesn't vote, and. We see that with the employees of Walmart getting a change here, and we ought to be condemning these companies that are not ethical with their employees or bringing them on with it. We ought to also be encouraging the Costco's and the Starbucks and the other companies who are treating their employees uh, correctly and with respect and dignity. So. As a blogger, I think you have a responsibility to do some of that, too. Uh, Bruce, you just gave me a call-in order that I will be fulfilling because what you just said, let me, I I, got to go, but I want to say quickly, I had an encounter with a cop this week, and it was a very, you know, I got stopped, and the encounter was professional and respectful, and what I did with that is I blogged it, not because I was so happy that the cop stopped me, but that that is the type of cop I think we needed to get into the news. Hopefully, by doing that, others behave as well. And what you just told me that I needed to do, I accept because you're absolutely right. There are times you need to be out there talking about those who are doing good. And, sir, you can rest assured I'll be doing that expeditiously. Folks, please do remember Coffee Party Radio has three shows at this point. We're getting a couple more coming in shortly. On Sundays at 8.30 a.m., we have I Take Liberty with My Coffee with Bobby Rodrigo. On Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, we have Lunch with Loudon with Janine Loudon. And on Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, we have Politics Done Right with Egberto Willis. Please do remember to go to coffeepartyusa.com. Coffeepartyusa.com. Join the team that will continue to be providing fact base information that you're not getting directly from our our standard media but most importantly join us to make a difference uh, on the ground there are great things happening at coffeepartyusa.com now there are great things that we have intending for our new future please become a member we do need you we have a whole bunch of volunteers we don't work for pay we work to move the country forward. Thank you for giving me this hour. Thank you very much for listening. And for those who are listening on the podcast, please do remember again, join us. Coffee Party USA. Visit us on Facebook. Join the Coffee Party. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, callers. Bye-bye. Adios.